Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. My name is Christopher Moldong and I am an author. Today I will read pages 4 to 6 of my fantasy short story, The Wizard, the Shadow, and the Tree. Next week, I will read pages 1 to 4 of my short story, The Orthodox Clash. Here is the synopsis. Corporate America meets boxing in The Orthodox Clash. Bob Commons, an everyday office worker, trains in boxing and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. When his boss, Brick Crookshark, begins to train boxing at the same gym, events lead to them fighting each other in an amateur boxing match. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismodon.com. You can buy my first novel, The Mustard Prince and the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99 on Amazon.com or on my author's website. Also, for $1.99, you can buy my short stories and short story collections, starting with The Land of the Wooden Statues, which is a gothic horror short story. Then there's The Horror Collection, which is a compilation of three of my gothic horror short stories. And the Fantasy Fable Collection, which is a compilation of four of my Fantasy Fable short stories and has this story in it. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel on SoundCloud. If you're on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. We'll pick up where we left off. A haphazardly put-together fence made out of old logs and thick branches surrounds the old wooden house. Some of the fence posts lean at an angle, and it barely reaches higher than Ladam's shoulders. The ground around the house does not even have grass but an inconspicuous fig tree sits in the backyard. An elderly man with noticeable wrinkles and a somewhat long nose comes from the house. His white beard drags along the dirty ground, and he walks with a cane seemingly made from a branch. As he comes towards me, his eyes never leave my face. Thank you, my friend, he tells the bear. It unhands me and leaves. Now, what are you doing in this place? He asked with a surprisingly commanding tone. I stammer with my words. Ah, oh, I, my sister, Tree, allow me to help. He touches my forehead with his cane, and I strangely feel calmer. Excuse me, sir, but I came for a fig from your tree. My sister is sick, and I've been told that one of those fruits can cure her. I do not know where you heard such a story, but I simply cannot allow you to take one of these figs. Why? It's for my sister. You are doing right by her, but you must leave here. He points his cane at me. I cannot have you telling anyone about this place. I fall to my bottom and scoot backwards. Somehow, I scramble back to my feet and run the, the other direction. It's close to night time, and I really don't want to go back through the cave. I can't stay around the wizard's house either because of all the animals roaming about. I head east towards the cave's exit, and no animals are in sight. There's an old oak tree that I lie down against and fall asleep. In my dreams, I am in front of the wizard's house. The front door opens, and the shadow comes out of it telling me, You cannot give up now. You are already this far in, so why turn back? Your sister only gets sicker by the day. Use the darkness of the night to your advantage. I wake up to find that the sun disappeared and the moon showed itself. With the forest's canopy blocking the moonlight, I make my move. No wandering animals are in sight, and I reach the wizard's house with no problem. I jump over the wooden fence and rush towards the fig tree. Despite the thinness of its trunk, the wizard appears from behind it as if he was waiting for me. I figured that you would come back, and what better time than in the dark? Nothing gets past a wizard, I suppose. Despite it being dark, I can still sense a pesky shadow lurking about. He looks around and then redirects his attention to me. This tree is not what you think. It will cure your sister of your, her ailment, but its fruit will grant its consumer immortality. Your desire to save your sister is admirable, 
so I will allow you to pick one fig from this tree. What you do with it is entirely up to you. I pick the fig and notice that the wizard is watching me the whole time, even as I walk out of his property. I look up and our eyes meet. Fatigue overcomes my body and I fall asleep on the forest floor. When I wake up, it's morning and I'm lying on the ground with ants crawling on me. The shadow waits for me against a tree just outside of the wizard's house. For some reason, I cannot get up. You seem hardly able to move, but I see that you have the fruit. Give it to me, and I will deliver it to your sister. <clears throat> the sa shadow says as it creeps closer to me. I don't even, I don't know if I even want to give it to her. Then how can you save your sister? She will die because of you. She'll live forever if she eats it. Let her live forever. With immortality, she can be a ruler of kingdoms with you by your side. No more will you live in a filthy orphanage. Now, give the fruit to me. Away with you, Shadow. Only I will decide what to do with this fruit. Without another word, the Shadow leaves. A few seconds later, the wizard stands over me. It looks like you still have the fruit. You have passed my test, Ladam. I will repay your courage by healing your sister, the wizard tells me. The wizard disappears, and I feel strong again. The fruit is gone from my hand, and I make the journey back to the orphanage with my sister out front waiting for me. She runs to me and gives me a strong hug. Once my sister got better, I stopped stealing and got an apprenticeship. My sister helps out and in the orphanage helping those that don't have anyone in their lives. I'd ask around about the wizard and the shadow, but no one has any stories about them. I guess that it's a secret that my sister and I will keep for the rest of our lives. That's all for today. If you like this, please subscribe, share, and comment uh, on this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you are on SoundCloud. Please rate, review, and share this channel if you're on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you for listening to this reading. Next week, I will read pages 1 to 4 of the Orthodox Clash. Also, uh, check out my manga reviews for Nagima volumes 25 through 28, and next week, volumes 29 through 32. Thank you, and until next time.